Here we go, the 72nd uh, country, Mauritania. So I took a bus uh, from Dahala to the border between Mauritania and Western Sahara. And uh, I needed to change the vehicle after I crossed the border. So I got to my departure job and then I still waiting for in the Moranka side and after a while i feel like i waited so long and then eventually i asked the immigration officer they told me i have to pass the um the immigration and then find the vehicle on the other side so immediately i rushed a little bit uh, to find my vehicle but luckily it's still there and then i was the only passenger on the minibus after i crossed the border into mauritania so there were like three person including me and the other other driver and the, the minibus owner and uh, there were so many checkpoints after I crossed uh, into Mauritania somehow I feel oh perhaps it's a not very safe country but uh, on the other hand if there are a lot of uh, checkpoints so uh, of course they did some job so maybe I will be safer anyway I just go with the floor so I just arrived um, in Lua Debu. So the driver asked me where to put me. I just showed them a hostel I found in my guidebook. But when I arrived in the hostel, I found like the price is even much more higher than the book was mentioned. So I decided to find some other option. So I first went to a copy place to borrow Wi-Fi. And then I asked the owner if he know any accommodation option for the budget. And then there's another local um, black man just told me he got a friend who was renting out uh, his own room for visitor. So I just asked him to call his friend for me and then I just talked to his friend in the phone and then his friend told me he used to be a couch surfer as well but nowadays he doesn't help people but instead uh, offer his renting so I just agreed with that because the the cost will be much lower than the one in the hostel so after that they picked me up and then there are like two, three other white person uh, in the vehicle so that was the family from Belgium so the local black man just drive the car for them and then that Belgian family, like father and the two sons, they came here for co- study Quran. So, yeah, it's a big world, so you meet different people. And after that, they dropped me at uh, the local guy's place. So I found that it's just like a, a, a just basic room, you know, it's like a traditional African style. Uh, living and then there's no tap water even the electricity shut down in the night so they offer me candle I stayed like in the Nua Dibu with them for like two days after that I made my way to Luakshu in Luakshu I made my way to Lis who I earlier met in Morocco Rabah when I was applying my Mauritania visa and then she, she told me if I ever made it I, she would host me so yeah i just um, made it to meet her and then um, before i met her i was uh, waiting her at her friend's place uh, her friend's named mole is a local mauritania guy who from shingaiti and then he runs a bookstore in luakshu after that i stayed in luakshu with liz for about one week and then mole is one of his neighbor liz lives in actually with his husband her husband actually it's her boyfriend but in Mauritania if you want to have a relationship the only option is to get married so I I don't feel shocked why Liz is married um, and then Liz was very hospitality she showed me like taking care of me and then I joined a lot of activities with them and, and then you know both uh, Mike and Molly like I remember we went to a mini fashion show that was my first fashion show in Africa and then we drank uh, Visam which is a very common 
a um, drink made by flower like uh, the pink color you were usually finding in West Africa and then we went to the four star hotel to enjoy a mini concert I really you know it's so glad to see the singer you know he was dancing singing performing he enjoyed himself himself so much and of course I we went to a party as well it's like uh, someone's birthday some Filipina lady and it was uh, her local husband so Liz took me there just for food <laughs> because I didn't prepare any present anyway they just took me and on that party I met a Nick who is doing business in West Africa he is originally from India um, and also I finally went to Haman because uh, before in Morocco I wanted to go to Haman but most of my hosts they were uh, guys I couldn't go with them so I finally went to Haman with Liz so we just went to one um, it's very rough basic uh, equipment when you enter everyone get one jug of hot water and then you went to a a, like steam room but it's made by stone you know very rough and then you wet yourself after that you apply soap and then you steam a little bit and then you can just went out to lay on another longer stone and then the local woman will scrub you <laughs> so it's really nice experience because after that uh, somehow in West Africa whenever I got no opportunity for shower I I will miss it because that will make you clean and then I stayed in New Aksho for like uh, one week and then I encountered the protest. But of course I stayed uh, in, in, inside the house other than going to the street. And then also um, I, I can just go to the black market to change money after staying in the capital for a few days. Um, one day I finally made my way with Molly and Nick to the um, fish market yeah because I just so curious um, and then um, the smell on the beach is not that nice because there were always like dead fish and and then you will see like fishermen they were doing their prey on the beach and then um, I also encountered a, a slave and not not slave like stealer um but accidentally he opened my bag but there's nothing inside so i didn't notice anything but uh, that just like uh, reminded my awareness how oh, i'm i'm in black africa now so i have to be alert and uh, be careful for my ongoing trip and on the departure day heading to senegal um because mike went to some other city so he couldn't send me to take the transport so Nick sent me to take the minibus instead and he was a little bit worried about me for going to Senegal alone because uh, he also got business in Senegal so he kind of uh, knows Senegal well and so he handed me into a local man who sat in the same minibus with me uh, that guy's name the M M Momodu and uh, but after I arrived at the border between Senegal and Mauritania, I decided not follow, following him because he needed to pray and to eat and something. But I just want to make my way to San Luis as soon as possible. So uh, I decided to go alone to take the boat. But I tried to exchange money, but the bank doesn't accept it. And after that, just some one local guy just followed me, tried to annoy me, but I just tried to ignore that. And after that, I met him. A casual wear policeman I just told him like that guy is annoying me and then that policeman was so kind he helped me out showed me where the toilet is accompanied me to change money and then just give me guidance to pass the immigration um, to make my way to Senegal and uh, so eventually I, sh I just leave that uh, annoying guy behind and uh, I still remember the last sentence the um, Mauritania officer, police officer told me don't ever do not let anybody in Seneca know I have cash because otherwise they will be crazy yeah 